At the bow, the waves are generated by the hull pushing water out of the way. At the stern, similar waves are generated as the water rushes to fill the void left as the hull moves forwards. From the side, it looks as if there's one wave system generated with its first peak at the bow, and a second wave system generated with its first trough at the stern. Now, it gets complicated fairly quickly if we have two wave systems, so let's just focus on the bow to begin with. At slow speed, you might get a wave profile like this. The wavelength is short and the wave speed is, well, it's the same as the ship's speed. As the ship speeds up, the whole thing stretches out, increasing the wavelength. This immediately tells us that the wavelength is proportional to the wave speed, which is directly linked to the speed of the ship. The higher the ship speed, the higher the wave speed, and the longer the wavelength. As the ship speed increases, you'll eventually get to a point where the wavelength is two thirds of the ship's length. Your peaks are here and here, and your troughs are here and here. Remember though, we said that there are two wave systems generated, the second being at the stern, starting with a trough. The troughs from the stern system and the bow system are in the same place, so we get constructive interference. Behind the ship, a massive wash is generated as the bow waves and stern waves add together. While that doesn't help you on a ship, if you're on a small boat, pulling a wakeboarder for example, that might be what you need.